The committee will now consider H.R. 5637, the American Jobs Matter Act of 2010, which was introduced by Representative Christopher Murphy. This bill would allow federal contracting officers to review information about the impact on American jobs when awarded a federal contract. H.R. 5637 authorizes contractors to submit a jobs impact statement with their offers, which explains the effects on jobs within the United States. If the contract is awarded to the contractor, the job impact statement may include such information as the number of jobs expected to be created or retained by the contractor, the number of jobs expected to be created or retained by the subcontractors, and a guarantee that any jobs created or retained will not be moved outside of the United States. This bill allows contracting officers to consider the information supplied by a contractor, its job impact statement, and evaluation of an offer. And the contracting officer may request further information to verify the information submitted by the contractor. Additionally, the bill requires the head of each executive agency to submit an annual report to Congress on how frequently the agency uses job impact statements in the evaluation of competitive proposals. Uh, I urge the members of the committee to support this very good uh, legislation, of course, and I um, recognize the ranking member for his comments at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And although this, uh, this markup is going very smoothly and I expect it to continue, <laughs> I would like to express some concern on the American Jobs uh, Matter Act. Reason being that, as you know, this is a complex subject. Uh, the special IG has repeatedly showed us that, for the TARP, that jobs created or saved is, in fact, difficult or perhaps impossible to actually achieve. Notwithstanding that controversy in, in the impact statement, I do believe that the attempts and the intent of this bill are worth us exploring, amending, and going forward with. It is unclear how a contracting officer should use the jobs of this impact statement. It is also unclear how often someone would use the impact statement in order to tout the amount of jobs they are creating or save, only to have those jobs creatively disappear after the bill is in. Uh, Congresswoman of Speer of California, I understand, will be offering a good amendment, one that I believe will bring further reporting and accountability. Additionally, the minority will be offering some amendments. We believe all of these amendments can coexist in a final bill, along with additional work that the majority and minority can do over the break. I believe that getting it right, at least sending out a clear signal that we do care about claims made of American jobs. And claims retain, uh, or and the fact af after the fact that those jobs, in fact, were saved, that people were employed. I would mention that there are many things that we're concerned about on both sides of the aisle. One of them is not just jobs. We're also very concerned about American competitiveness and efficiency. So, notwithstanding any jobs claims in in contracting, I hope that on a bipartisan basis we understand that half as many jobs producing a better product through automation and other efficiencies often create opportunities far greater than the jobs lost. If it weren't for that, horse and buggy, steam power and the like would still be uh, the, the law of the land because, in fact, often destroying jobs but creating prosperity allows for new and un previously unheard of jobs to occur. Most of us in America, millions operate in the service industry and other areas only made possible by the wealth and success of our efficiencies in agriculture, manufacturing and mining over the many decades before us. So as we see 5.5 jobs lost, 5.5 million jobs lost in America, I would certainly say that if those jobs were due to greater efficiency, there would be a resurgence in America. If they are due to less efficiency, no amount of make-work jobs will ever correct that loss. So, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to working on this in order to ensure that contracting look at the right things, including jobs retained in America, and yield back the balance of my time. I would like to thank the gentleman for his statement. Uh, I now yield um, to 
the gentleman from Connecticut, um, and I want to commend him on this outstanding legislation that he's put forward, uh, recognize him for five minutes. Thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank, you, thank uh, the ranking member for his comments and look forward to uh, several of the amendments that will be offered uh, today, which uh, I agree with uh, the ranking member. I think will strengthen components of, uh, of this legislation offered by um, both the minority and the majority uh, side. Uh, listen, this bill represents a pretty simple concept, um, the concept that the number of American jobs created should matter when awarding federal work. Um, manufacturing in particular in this country is under assault, and it's under assault for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that our historic commitment to using <coughs> taxpayer dollars, which largely come through the military purchasing program, um, because our historic commitment to using those dollars to buy goods from American manufacturers is being eviscerated um, by a um, process of waiver applications that have sent billions and billions of dollars in uh, federal work overseas. Uh, just in the past uh, two years, 100,000 waivers to the Buy America Act have been, uh, have been allowed and granted. Uh, which means that less and less of our U.S. taxpayer dollars are going to U.S. manufacturers. Um, this bill would simply say that a contractor applying for federal work has the ability to include as part of his application a statement on how many jobs here in the United States are going to be created by that particular application, and that then the agency has the ability to use that um, job impact statement as one part of the criteria for awarding that contract. Frankly, when I talk about this idea to my constituents, they're amazed that it's not already on the books. They're amazed that we don't consider as a factor already uh, the amount of uh, U.S. jobs that are going to be created. Uh, as we try to uh, continue this economic recovery, um, we can just use existing authorized dollars in a smarter way to grow uh, American jobs. Um, I, I would add also that I think there's a strong national security component uh, to this legislation. Uh, as we continue to move defense production and defense manufacturing overseas, we are compromising this country's national security. Um, this has been a long-term trend, one that we need to reverse. Uh, and by giving or allowing for some priority uh, for bids that produce more of a particular military good here in the United States, we're not only adding to our economic recovery, we're not only protecting and growing jobs here in the United States, but I think we're also uh, adding to our defense industrial base and adding to uh, the protection of our own uh, nation. So, uh, I'd like to thank the, the chairman for uh, bringing this bill up. I'd like to thank my, my primary co-sponsors on this uh, legislation, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, Mr. Manzullo, mm -hmm. Mr. Kritz, uh, and uh, again, I look forward to the debate and look forward to uh, amendments uh, to being worked on today. I yield back. And I thank the gentleman for uh, his comments and thank him for his work. Uh, any other members seeking recognition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, I call up the bill. One second. Any, I'm seeking I now call up H.R. 5637. Without objections, the bill is considered as read, open for amendment at any time. Okay. H.R. 5637, a bill to amend the Federal Property and Administrative Services Act of 1949 and Title 10, United States uh, Code. Without objections, the bill is considered as read and open for amendment. I From California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you and the ranking member. ISA for your support of this very simple amendment, um, and I commend Congressman. Correct, we now designate the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5637, offered by Ms. Spear of California. And I commend Congressman Murphy of Pennsylvania for introducing it, and, and like he commented, I think that we should have had this on the books long ago. So this particular amendment just builds on um, what is in Mr. Murphy's bill by requiring the contractor that actually gains the award of the contract who has used the opportunity to submit a job impact statement uh, requires them to report uh, six months after the award of the contract the number of full-time uh, equivalent jobs that were added or retained that otherwise would have been lost as a result of um, not being awarded the contract. Um, it also requires this re report be made to Congress, and the amendment also authorizes agencies to take into account the accuracy of these reporting statements 
when issuing or renewing contracts with the reporting contractor? I yield back. Uh, would the gentlelady yield for a question? I certainly will. I thank the gentlelady. Uh, would you envision that, from a technical standpoint, if this amendment uh, is adopted, that it would become a reporting requirement under the past performance information already required, that it would be folded into that on an ongoing basis? Yes. I thank the gentlelady. Yield back. I agree with the, the Spear Amendment. I believe it improves the bill, and I am prepared to support it. If no other members wish to speak on the amendment, the question is on adopting the Spear Amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say, opposed say no. In the opinion of the Chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Recognize the gentleman from California. Kirk will now designate the amendment. I'm sorry. You have the amendment? No. They do. Do they have it now? Now we do. Amendment to H.R. 5637 offered by Mr. Issa of California. Page 3, line 13, strike the Chairman, I ask unanimous remarks. consent of the amendment Second be considered period. as read. Without objection. Mr. Chairman, so ordered. this amendment, like uh, Congresswoman Spears' amendment, is intended to provide consequences for contractors who overstate, inflate the number of jobs created, allowing the agency uh, to, uh, to deal with those who will make inflated claims, and then ultimately, when reporting under uh, Ms. Spears' uh, recommendation, perhaps come up short. We believe that it is difficult, if not impossible, to define jobs created or saved. On the other hand, it is not difficult nor impossible to report jobs used. So under uh, uh, Congresswoman Spears' amendment that has now been adopted, we believe that putting real teeth into the after action for consideration uh, would be appropriate, including uh, that the agency may, and I repeat may, use uh, all normal evaluation means, including debarment in the case of the most uh, flagrant violations. The example that I would certainly want to put into the record is if somebody claims they are going to use a thousand people and then effectively use none by exporting it and six months later upon reporting either honestly or dishonestly it is discovered that in fact they did not even begin to meet that requirement, I certainly believe that that would be appropriate for debarment. So, Mr. Chairman, we simply believe that this amendment puts the kind of a teeth, although it is a may and not shall, that would allow for contractors who have been seriously lied to after award, uh, even if they cannot take back the contract, to have the kind of punitive requirements for future contracts necessary. As the Chairman knows, sometimes a contract is a one-time contract. So when a thousand items are delivered and no jobs are created, the only capability they have when they have been lied to about jobs that are going to be used here in America would be these kinds of uh, extreme means. And so I would urge support for this amendment that does give opportunity for teeth and yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, gentlemen, for his statement. Any other members seeking recognition? If sure. Gentlemen, uh, yeah, it's, it's my understanding that if, if the contractor made a 20 percent estimate, miss error in the estimate, he could lose 20 percent of the payment for the contract? Is that is it? Then I'm not reading it correctly. No. Okay. What what would be the implications of making a, say a 20 percent error in the estimate? Um. Well, in our case, this amendment would would say that if that if that were far enough in the opinion of the agency, they could not allow further contracts to go to that individual. Uh, it. Uh, obviously, there. Uh, and if the gentleman continue yielding, we we expect that there will be fluctuations in the actual amount of jobs uh, that are going to be used, but we are simply saying that if it is an extreme case, uh, that, there, that this would be a tool that would be available. Okay. This is the amendment that was just distributed to me. Am I reading the correct one? This is the page 3, line 13. Uh, if the gentleman would, would, would allow me to make a terrible mistake right, the text you have received is different than the one that I thought we were amending. Okay. Uh, so, just I think the question is, where is the amendment? <laughs> what amendment is on? Not the one I'm talking. Did you hand out the wrong amendment, or did you change it? Okay. If I can switch talking points to the right one, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I apologize. I'd be delighted to recognize you to do that. Oh, wait a second. 
where's the right text? Okay. Chairman, the, I, I, why, don't we, why don't you give me the right talking points for the text they got? Uh, to answer the gentleman's question, and I apologize that uh, for the amendment that was issued so that we not have to reissue, you're correct that they could be forced to repay based on uh, a ratio, up to a ratio of what they said they were going to create they didn't. It, it does put a financial onus. It's not a requirement, but it does allow for it. Yeah, my, my worry there is that that would um, result in a significant increase in the cost for contracts, and that the taxpayer simply wouldn't get as good a deal as they, you know, if, if even a 20 percent error in the estimate of the number of people ultimately employed, which to my mind is in the range of a reasonable error, would result in a potential 20 percent loss in the payment, which would be a huge loss in the profit um, for the contract. Let, let, let me make this suggestion. Why don't we uh, 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 withdraw this at this time and you can let them continue to sort this out and let us go to the next amendment and we'll come back to you. How's that? I would ask you to consent to withdraw that amendment. And uh, could we get the right amendment? Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. <laughs> Without objection. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, recognize the gentleman from Ohio. I have an amendment at the desk. Kurt, report the amendment. I think this is a, a reference, a, Amendment 3. That's, how, that's, that's what I have. It's a Jordan Amendment. Uh, Thank you. Amendment to H.R. 5637 offered by Mr. Jordan of Ohio. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. And I recognize the uh, gentleman from Ohio for um, five minutes to explain. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this amendment is real simple. It would strike the phrase uh, in every instance from the bill, uh, the phrase jobs retained. The committee will probably remember, uh, remember a few months back we had uh, hearings about the stimulus bill and in particular uh, the recovery.gov website and those who are responsible for the information on that website. We learned in that, that hearing about some of the uh, crazy accounting for how those dollars were spent, the phantom congressional districts, et cetera. We also uh, have heard uh, this, uh, that for the, for the first time we have this new phrase, jobs saved or jobs retained. Uh, very first time we've used that in any type of accounting uh, with the federal government. Uh, in fact, if, uh, during those hearings, I asked one of the witnesses who had 30 years with the GAO if in his tenure at the GAO he ever had used the term jobs saved or jobs retained, and his uh, statement on the record was no, this is the first time it had ever been used. Uh, respected economists like Mr. Alan Meltzer have said, quote, one can search economic textbooks forever without finding a concept called jobs saved. It doesn't exist. Another economist, prestigious economist Greg Mankiw, has called it a non-measurable metric. So this simply says, look, the American people get the joke. They know that this is a term totally made up, no way to measure. Let's not further this by including it in this good piece of legislation. Let's just get rid of that and talk about jobs that are created, not jobs that are, quote, saved or retained. This amendment removes that requirement for government contractors to perpetuate this fiction that was created in the Stimulus Act. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would yield back and urge a yes vote on the amendment. And I recognize the gentleman from Connecticut, Congressman Murphy. Thank you, Mr. For Chairman. Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I speak in opposition to the amendment. Uh, the fact is, is that American manufacturing is under assault today. And I wish it wasn't the case, but we are losing jobs at a rapid rate in many of our manufacturers. Um, many of those manufacturers are bidding for U.S. government work. Uh, and I wish it were the case that every single applicant for a U.S. contract was going to be simply adding jobs as a result of that contract. But because much of their other work is leaving because they are losing revenue in other parts of their business, often that contract that they're receiving from the federal government um, might not add net jobs, might actually retain jobs that they were planning on laying off due to other losses within their manufacturing business. I, I, think, it's, I think it is absolutely measurable. I think Ms. Spears' amendment um, puts teeth into this to allow for the agency to track 
uh, whether or not those jobs are truly retained in the long run. Um, but I think in this context in which so many manufacturers across this country are losing jobs due to the loss of many private contracts, it's entirely appropriate for us uh, to allow them to assess the number of jobs that would have been lost due to other uh, business uh, decreases that will be retained by the awarding of a particular federal contract. Uh, I think it's an appropriate measurement. I think it's something that can be done, and I, uh, for that reason, would oppose the amendment. Gentleman from uh, Louisiana. Yes, I'd like to, uh, to speak in support of uh, Mr. Jordan's amendment. I believe that we, uh, as a body, uh, has a duty to the American people to be as transparent as possible. Um, and to uh, and to take cover uh, behind uh, a phrase that many economists have stated to be immeasurable, I believe, uh, speaks loudly of how uh, inadequate we are as a body to convey uh, directly to the people uh, what the bills that we pass uh, intend to do. Um, I believe that we have to approach our work uh, as the uh, as a body that represents the American people to be as transparent and as truthful to the American people as possible. And I believe that Mr. Jordan's amendment will enable us to uh, to do that. Thank you. Now you're back, gentleman from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just point out that this. Uh, amendment from my colleague from Ohio uh, would give credit to a manufacturer who fired employees then hired them back. And so this would actually encourage the firing of employees and the rehiring of employees in order to get credit rather than just allowing the employees to stay on the payroll and be retained. That seems a bit nonsensical to me. I don't think we should be encouraging employers to fire their employees and then hire them back in order to get credit on a government contract. Any Mr. Other? Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Tafi from Utah. Uh, Gentleman th from Utah. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. And, and I do support the Jordan Amendment. I, I have a, a fundamental challenge with the bill as a whole because I do think it lacks definition and incentivizes some games, gamesmanship al along the way. I appreciate the gentleman's concern about manufacturing, and that is a bigger, broader dis uh, discussion on how do we make our own domestic manufacturing capabilities uh, and assets and resources the infrastructure that we have in this country more competitive. I think that is a bigger, broader uh, discussion. Um, and, and I do share that goal that I want to make them more competitive. But in this bill, the way it is currently stated, it lacks definition on, on all fronts. The administration went way out there in terms of creating this new term of job saved. They have had every incentive to try to come up with a definition for that. And ultimately, they came to the conclusion that they couldn't do it. Uh, they went out there on a limb, and a lot of us criticized them for that. They had every incentive to try to come up with a definition and a, and a metric. And every expert that we heard from pretty much said, we can't determine it, and they eventually abandoned it. And, and so unless there has been some new revelation, some new thing that has come about in a way to actually define what this term is supposed to mean, I, I think we have an obligation to follow the lead of the administration and abandon this term. I just can't see any way to actually define it. And uh, I have concerns about how we define other parts of it, but particularly this point. And if you have a suggestion on how to define that, let's talk about it. But we want to create an even playing field that is predictable, that everybody is playing from the same set of rules. And the way the bill is currently construed, I don't see that. I don't see the, the, the clear definition where everybody's playing by the same rules. As laudable as the goal might be, if you don't, if you don't come up with the definition of it, then we, I, I can't see how we move forward with it. Any other members seeking recognition? On the uh, yield back. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lukemeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, speaking in favor of the amendment, I uh, have some grave concerns about the bill as a whole, and I think just the thought process that uh, the sponsor continues to go that counting jobs somehow uh, makes us more competitive in, in the manufacturing field 
uh, on a world basis. Uh, I, I mean, I, I have a hard time following the, the logic on that. And here we are with a, with a word, a phrase, a definition in this bill that actually adds to the gamesmanship of, of how they do things with counting these things. Whenever you allow somebody to say jobs retained and you can't prove that, uh, does that mean that somebody, if he's got uh, one contract that's 200 jobs that are saved or retained, and the next guy says 800 jobs are saved or retained, does that give him an edge when it comes to awarding of these contracts? Um, if there's no follow-up to this, there's no way to prove it, uh, you're going to have all kinds of gamesmanship whenever you start putting these, uh, these, these, these numbers in here. I think this is, while it may be well-intentioned, I think that there's a whole lot of problems with counting people and awarding contracts based on as that, as one of those as one of the criteria for doing that, I think it really opens us up to a lot of uh, um, problems down the road that we don't really need to get into. With that, I yield back. Mr. Chairman, on this side, uh, I recognize the gentleman from California. Chairman, I'll I'll be brief. Uh, I would hope that all three of the uh, minority uh, amendments are are put into the bill for a couple of reasons, and one of them is one of the later amendments that I'll be offering, in fact, does go a long way to Mr. Driehaus and other concerns that we establish sets of criteria. We allow the professionals to establish uh, sets of criteria because just like the gentleman from Ohio said, well, what if somebody were to fire and rehire? Well, uh, under the FAR rules, we could, in fact, ensure that they define what a new employee is or not. But more importantly, having been a small employer uh, or an employer of, of less than 400 workers, I recognize very, very much that you often, as a smaller employer, don't have the ability to simply say, well, let's put up a new factory and hire new people to meet this contract. You get a small contract, what you do is you put your people on overtime. And so we're going to undoubtedly have the professional community ask us to help them modify this, and I hope we can get input before this goes to the floor, to define these U.S. job hours and, uh, you know, and, and uh, full-time job equivalents in a way that they can work with. So one of the things the later amendment does is it actually calls on the FAR Consul to establish regulations. If they need further, at, when we're done amending this bill today, if they need further clarification, I look forward to working with the chairman on a final manager's amendment that meets their requirements so that when they go to implement the concept of this bill, they can do so with rules that, that they can understand that would, per, that would prevent or limit gamesmanship. And with that, I yield. For, of course, I would. Um, uh, just to say that I think the gentleman is very right that in one of the uh, amendments that uh, I think he'll be offering to have the FAR implement the provisions of this bill, um, that does make the bill better, um, and that will lend some certainty to the implementation of the bill. I think we also, though, can look to uh, how states have uh, done this. Um, though the federal government does uh, not currently um, assess job impacts in the United States, I think wrongly, uh, when awarding contracts, um, many state governments uh, do that. Many state governments uh, uh, track jobs um, with res uh, with uh, uh, in connection with particular grant awards that they've given economic development assistance. Uh, I think there's plenty of experiential data out there to teach us how to do this, and I think with a future amendment that we'll be adopting, um, we'll allow the people who are experts in this to to to, to make it right. I thank the gentleman, and uh, I uh, support the gentleman's amendment, and uh, yield back the balance of my time, Chairman. Any other members seeking recognition? I do not support um, the Jordan Amendment and, of course, um, the information he seeks to take out from this bill is important to leave in it. So uh, on that note, I would like to ask um, uh, the members of the committee um, to vote no. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those vote no. That chairman, appears of chair, chairman, the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. Mr. Chairman. And the amendment is not a Mr. Chairman, respectfully ask for a roll call. The gentleman asks for a roll call. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Towns. No, no, no. Let me just say, uh, why don't we just hold the roll call vote until we finish everything else and then we'll have the roll call.